Welcome to the ATU Schools Podcast. I'm your host, Andrew Cluley, the Director of Communications for the Ann Arbor Public Schools. Joining uh, with me today is uh, Dr. Swift, our superintendent. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Thanks for having us, Andrew. So, Dr. Swift, I know that uh, we have been talking over the last several months uh, regarding the AAPS Strategic Equity Plan. We've been doing some work uh, behind the scenes and whatnot. Um, But I know that in the timeline that we were talking about, uh, sort of that late winter, early spring, we were going to go out and have a community conversation. Sounds like we're about ready to actually kick off that conversation. Yes, Andrew, you know, I'm so excited uh, because we're ready to do a full community engagement, you know, in the before times about three years ago, and that was placed on hold. As you said, we've continued to do some work internally uh, to train ourselves and develop ourselves around uh, practices of equity, Uh, but we're really excited uh, here during March, April, and May to have a community conversation. And what type of things are we going to do to to have this conversation? So we really are interested in convening a community conversation that will help us to discover kind of the collective priorities that we have uh, for our children, for our schools, for our community, and for our future together. We're really excited that it feels like uh, in our community that Uh, Folks are more comfortable with coming out to have conversation. Um, People are also really good at still Zooming uh, when they choose it that way. So we'll use a variety of formats. But our purpose is really to reconnect with our community. We've heard some clear priorities over the previous two years, and you know the results of all that engagement is posted on our website in thousands of responses, and they point to the same priorities. And so this is a great time to check back in with our community to see if these are still the priorities or if they've adjusted a bit. Uh, coming through this time. So obviously some of the the things that were most important over the last couple of years may have been COVID specific and we're trying to see if they're still the priorities that we have in the community. Exactly. If those are, are, are remaining our top priorities and we're also interested to ensure that we're hearing from all voices. So we'll be going at this engagement a little bit differently. We will still be convening uh, the large uh, in-person groups and the, and, the, and the Zoom groups for everyone, but we'll also also be doing some smaller conversations with um, affinity groups, with uh, groups who will uh, invite us. For example, we have about eight really beautifully active parent groups, our uh, APAC group, our LBGTQIA parent group, our district-wide Black parent support group, our APISA group, um, our uh, Arab American parent and student support group. And I haven't listed them all, so I don't want anybody to think I've left anyone off this list. But we'll be visiting with um, a variety of groups in our community centers, at family night. We just added a date uh, to our April schedule for a family night over at one of our housing developments. And so we really are interested not just in having folks come to the school like we've done for many years, but us getting out into the community to hear uh, from all kinds of voices out there. You know, we've been through a lot over the previous three years, and uh, next Monday will be the three-year anniversary uh, of our, uh, you know, the closing of public schools in Michigan. Um, And really, this is our time this spring to reconnect with our community face-to-face, Zoom-to-Zoom as they prefer, um, and to check back in on what are our priorities. And for family members that maybe 
going out to a meeting or even doing the Zoom, they just can't fit into their schedule. I'm guessing that we're still going to do some of that online yes. uh, thought exchange opportunities so that everyone can participate. Even if it's, you know, three in the morning is the time that I get a couple minutes to do something, yes. I can I can have a way to, to participate that way as well. That's right. So we'll use the thought exchange. Uh, that is great for people who are pressed for time. I know not everyone prefers that venue, so we will be out with the... Um, the large chart paper and the markers and uh, use that tabletop format. Uh, we will be collecting that data the same as we're collecting the thought exchange. So. And, and what are kind of like the, the big high level ideas that we're, we're looking to hear from our community about? I'm guessing it's not uh, you're using the wrong kind of pencil in class, yeah. but you know, and I'm, I'm saying that kind of as, as a joke, but yes. uh, what type of big level things are we looking to hear from? So we are really wanting to hear from the lived experience of our students, our staff, our families in the Ann Arbor Public Schools and our community members. We want to hear what are the things we're doing that, that are working well for families. They want us to be sure to hold on to those things. We want to hear where our students and staff and families feel we need to focus more attention for some kind of adjustment or improvement. Uh, we want to hear what individuals believe are our most important priorities. What we're hoping to achieve out of these conversations is a collective understanding around just that our priorities for the future. Okay, and then where do we go with that information? Uh, as we start the conversation, this is gonna be tied into, I know, the development of the strategic equity plan. Yes. How, how does this conversation, sort of getting the aspirations of the community, how does that then tie into the plan? I love that question. So there, there will be a huge uh, database of thoughts shared during uh, this uh, 90 day community conversation and that data will be analyzed for themes and patterns and those uh, detailed responses will then inform the development of each of the areas of the strategic plan. So whether that's about academic uh, learning, uh, student academic learning growth and achievement, or whether that's about uh, student and staff well-being, or whether that's about parent, family, community, student empowerment, um, those uh, detailed responses will then be uh, shared uh, with those work teams on each of the areas of the strategic plan. So it sounds like that this work uh, that we're going to be collecting is going to help inspire and guide where where the groups go with the strategic plan. Exactly, because we want each of those areas. Those areas are, to me, fairly clear from our community already. We've heard time and again that these are the areas. But what's not clear is what might be the specific goal for, say, next year or for the next three years. So we will be listening to hear the pattern of urgency, the pattern of importance, uh, the pattern of take this step, please, you know, to support our children and our families and our community. We want that strategic plan to be live and active and a, a method by which we can realize the values and the priorities of our AAPS community, all the voices at this table. So then what is the timeline in terms of what happens? Uh, we said that we'll be out getting this information, collecting it for the next couple of months. Yes. Then what's the next step after that for the developing of the plan and, and such? So the next step then will be that we bring the framework to the Board of Education and back to the public. We ask for input and feedback uh, the framework will essentially say, here's what we heard about the priorities in each of these areas. Does that sound right to you? And uh, so during uh, May, as we wrap up the school year, we'll be checking in 
uh, to say, does this sound like what you intended, uh, what I call our strategic intention? Is that correct? Is that in line with your thinking? And then we'll bring to the board for their approval um, by, uh, in June, the, the framework. The second half of 2023, I think, is the more exciting. Uh, it's all exciting, but the, the, the more really satisfying part of it is each of those areas of the plan then will have a work team that takes all of that data from the community conversation and articulates it into goals and measures and more specificity than what the framework shows. So really, we're kicking off a conversation right now, but it's really only the first of uh, at least two conversations, and then the real hard work of of finalizing and coalescing or behind a, a strategic plan. Exactly, and that is the 2023 goal. So I see this not just as a spring endeavor. Spring is an exciting time because we want to hear from everyone. Um, but that second half of the year is putting actions to what we've heard, uh, which to me um, is really the most exciting part. So we hope that by Thanksgiving, around that time, uh, what the community and the board can see are each of the areas of the plan uh, pretty fully developed. And that'll be the 1.0 version. Um, And then I imagine over the coming years, we'll fine tune with I don't know if it's 1.1 or 2.0. I don't know how that gets labeled, <laughs> but you know what I mean. The next versions. Well, that sounds really exciting uh, and uh, sounds like a lot of work in front of us. It does. Um, but it all starts with that conversation, getting the voices of the community involved. And you may remember, but I love the um, phrase, everything good in life uh, begins with a conversation. And I... I, we're going to have to get that quoted and put it in the show notes because I don't want to use someone else's words without properly quoting them. But I really do believe that everything good about our moving forward from this very challenging time, everything good is going to be about this community conversation. You know, our, 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 there are children. Yeah, this, these are our schools. Everyone in this community has a stake and an interest in having quality public schools. And that's not a solo act. That's not the teacher or the principal's job. That is everybody's commitment. And so uh, I'm really excited for us to be able to restore the conversation in ways that we were unable to do during the height of uh, the pandemic the last three years. This is a great time, an exciting time in Ann Arbor. That's true. And uh, it's a good time. <laughs> and it's a good time to talk about the good news in the good. on the AT Schools podcast. And uh, this week we're going to celebrate. I, I'm actually... Uh, You, unfortunately, weren't able to join us last week, but last week's podcast was about uh, all about CTE. So if you haven't had a chance to listen, go click on that, listen to it. But amazingly enough, last week, there was also good news that's tied to the CTE program, and that is the uh, home building students pretty much just destroyed the competition (laughs) at the uh, Skills USA Carpentry. Um, Alex Enrique Shakespeare from Community came in first place. Zyers Ruff from Huron came in second place. Drew Jackson from Huron came in third place. The alternate, Patrick Hansen, he scored high enough that he's qualified for the state competition as well. In total, uh, the home building team is advancing seven students to states. So congratulations to the home home building program. Wow, I tell you, that AAPS home building program, uh, they are rock stars, aren't they? And I love to see them in action. And we need to sometime, Andrew, and I know you're on it, we need to go check on their home. How's it coming? <laughs> That's a good question. I have not I have not seen pictures in, in at least a couple of months, but I'm, I'm guess, guessing that it's got to be coming along pretty good because uh, they normally have it done by the end of the school year uh, under the leadership of uh, Mark Valsheen. We'll give him thanks and yeah. credit for uh, 
always doing an amazing job giving these kids these amazing skills and uh here we are going to be sending a bunch of kids on to the state's uh, championships for the Skills USA Carpentry Contest. Well, congratulations, and I can't wait to go out and see the home. I hope they haven't gotten too far behind in the winter weather, but they probably planned on Michigan winter, so it's probably fine, right? I would imagine so. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Swift, for joining us today and, and talking about uh, this community conversation that we're going to be getting underway. Thank you so much. I'm looking forward and I hope that folks, I know it's been uh, just an interesting time to figure out uh, if we're going to Zoom or be in person or how folks feel about their level of comfort. Uh, But please, uh, we'll be sharing some dates and we hope that folks will join us in the way that's most comfortable uh, because this conversation about important questions really matters for the future of our district. Thank you. And thank you for listening to the A2 Schools podcast. As always, if you have any questions about the Ann Arbor Public Schools, the first place to go is our website, a2schools.org. If there's a topic that you'd like to hear us talk about in a future episode of the A2 Schools podcast, please email communications at a2schools.org and we'll start uh, talking about that topic at some point in the future. And once again, thank you very much for listening to this week's edition of the A2 Schools podcast.